there are three stories. One story everybody needs to keep in mind is taxes, and you need to adjust for the difference in the tax cut. Second story is U.S. versus non-U.S. The U.S. economy is in a Goldilocks period, very strong. We see very strong earnings and growth in the first quarter if you're selling to U.S.-based customers. The third story is the continuing supply of new labor to meet labor demands. Those three things are lined up to be really helpful for companies that are focused on the U.S. You'd much rather be a chain of veterinary hospitals than FedEx. <laughs> In terms of serving the U.S. customer, Lawrence, you know, a lot of investors uh, look at the Russell 2000 to get sort of the more domestically focused companies, and that is an index that's basically in bear market territory. Are you Is it surprising to you in any way that the companies that have more U.S. exposure actually underperforming here? Well, it is somewhat surprising. I think it's all about uh, growth and perceived growth. We're in a low interest rate environment, and multiples are generally speaking very high. I, I think that as growth continues to show through from the U.S. oriented companies, I think that probably on a relative performance basis will change. You also point out that gasoline prices have been rising a lot starting in March. There are a lot of different factors, whether it be just WTI and Brent going higher, but also the storms in the Midwest. Uh, creating a crunch in the ethanol market, which is driving gas prices higher. These are costs that corporations have to deal with, even though they're not in the core of PPI or the core of CPI. So what are you hearing about rising oil prices, rising health care costs, and, and maybe even the dollar for the companies that are exposed more internationally? Right. I think one of the things we see is a little bit of relative weakness on the industrial side and the companies in our portfolio, and that's in significant part from year over year about a 5.5% rise in the dollar. On energy prices, not so big of a deal, really. Energy prices right now are about where they averaged last year. So there was a meaningful dip in Q4 in the beginning of, of Q1. But we've got to keep in perspective that it, it hasn't really changed that much. I think the, the biggest cost factor is wage growth, and we like the Fed's same job growth rate, which is running about 3.1%, 3.2%. After you take into account productivity improvements, that means unit labor costs are probably growing in the less than 2% range, which is really a manageable thing for companies that, that have a good control over their distribution you channels. You seem to make an important distinction between companies that are U.S. companies that are selling to U.S. Uh, into the U.S. market and those that don't. How big is the growth disparity likely to be between, well, the, between the chain of veterinary hospitals and a multinational like FedEx? Big, I think. Our data set are the U.S. companies. The U.S. companies are doing great. I, I, the, the growth rate in revenue and profit is almost as high in Q1 as it was for all of 2018. And that's certainly not the message and indication we're seeing in terms mm -hmm. of d demand overseas. All right. Lawrence, we'll see you next quarter.